So today we'll be reading from Exodus chapter 16, verses 24 and 11 to 20. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month, after they had become, uh, they came out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, "If we have died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around the plots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into the desert to starve an entire sin to death." And the Lord said to Moses, "I ran down bread from heaven to you." The people are to go out each day and gather enough for the day. In the way I test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. And then we will go to verse 11 to 20. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat me, and in the morning it will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord of your God. That evening quail came from sorry. That evening quail came and covered the Camp, and in the morning there was layers of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord had given you to eat. This is what the Lord had given you. Each one is to gather as much as he needs. Take an omen for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some gathered little. And when they measured it by the omen, he who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little did not have too little. Each one gathered as much as they needed. And Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and the smell. So Moses was angry. We will then go to Proverbs chapter um, 10, sorry, chapter 31, verses 10.
from Egypt, they were beginning to run out of their own food. And as I was reading and rereading this story and pondering it for today's message, I began to think about how running out of their own food in the wilderness is metaphorically like us human beings running out of our ideas of how to live and navigate life according to our own wisdom. Again, the Israelites, the people, were grumbling and complaining. They wanted to go back to Egypt because they were running out of food. They seemed to forget they were slaves. And at least they had lots of food, they said. And he brought us out here to starve in the desert. And it's interesting how we humans often would prefer to know, to deal with what we know, even if it's not good. We prefer with what's comfortable rather than what's best. We often want to take short-term gain for, and not look at the long-term health. That's why dieting seems to be so hard. And I dare say that the mothers in our lives have at some point in our lives tried to help us to look to, the, to what is long-term best, to what is right, not easy, to what is the best, not comfortable. So let's hear what the Lord says today. The Israelites somehow seem to forget how quickly they had been slaves in Egypt. And they were wanting to go back. Now why did that happen? Well, we've noticed in the story, every time they had something go wrong, what did they do? They complained. Now how many people here have ever hung around somebody who complains all the time? Yeah. So I don't want their names. But how does it make you feel when you're around complaining people all the time? How does it make you feel? Depressed. Depressed, frustrated, grumpy. Everything is terrible. Of course. So, what is the lesson? Well, in our Bible study this week, we were doing in Philippians, it said, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything's excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. And the Greek word for think doesn't mean, oh, isn't that a beautiful sunset? It means, like my dad used to say, ponder it. You know when you have a problem, and maybe, I don't know what you, my dad used to say, if you have a problem, you don't know what to do, go clean out a calf pen. It's mindless work, and you can think about it and mull it over while you're doing mindless pitching of And, uh, and, and clean it out. And at the end, often something will clarify in your brain. That's the kind of pondering. Ponder what's excellent. And it's really interesting. We've all heard about the crisis going on in colleges and universities with our best and brightest, about how they seem to be stressed out and not able to handle what's going on in life. Jonathan Haidt and Greg Rudonov, who are two, uh, so, uh, two uh, university professors, have been doing some significant research in it, and they've noticed the trend started with people born in 1995. Julianne, you were born in 96. Yay. Carissa, you were born in 95. Now, 96, sorry, January. Yeah. I keep saying, you're almost a year older than her. Kyle, where are you, Kyle? Oh, right, I sent him out. Yeah. He's helping out with Mother's Day brunch. We needed an adult. He was as close as we could find. <laughs> anyway, 